And what we did too is um, on our garage door we play we played a movie because there were a lot of people who were afraid to go through. So we would play a movie on the garage door so those that were waiting for others to go through would sit in front in the front yard there on the mm -hmm. and we had chairs and I bought like peanuts coloring books and crayons because I, I never advocated small children going through, even though we had codes to warn the characters not to scare them. I, I wanted them to have a place where they could have fun. We, we broadcast the movie on the garage door and then we had like buffet tables set up with coloring books and stuff. And people, the kids could, you know, watch the movie on the front of the house. Oh. Just watching them having fun, knowing that they were really getting into scaring people. And then the other thing was the people that actually visited, they were so grateful that there was somebody doing it. I mean, my, my front yard was a graveyard and there was a hearse out there. So, I mean, it was an adventure from the minute that you arrived at the house. And uh, um, so the, the people, it, it was, it, the funnest place to be was over at the gate at the exit because they just got pulling out of there, just screaming and yelling. And I mean, it was just like, you know, we knew we had done the right thing. <laughs> they were really scared. The other thing that was kind of interesting about building this, knowing that it was at their house, that, that Trish came up with was this area, this piece of deck that we're on right here was a closed end screen porch. So in order to make this a set, we had to close it in. Well, by closing it in, we're closing it in like they're light for their house, you know? So Trish designed it to where we had like this bisqueen walls in here inside the screened in area, you know? Bisqueen's a beautiful thing. Yeah, so she built like almost like a roll-up curtain. So after the show, for the next day, we could roll up this whole curtain on like this, you know, the kids like a blind. The, the kids could still go in the pool. They could still get light into their house, you know. And then you had like an outdoor refrigerator here. That we yeah, like, we did. We made something out of that. We just kind of whatever was here that we couldn't move into a big huge pile of, of, of lawn they furniture. Made, there was probably 20, 25 people involved because we had characters in every area to give the spooks. And, um, and then we also, of course, since it was on my property, we had guides that took people through. So it was kind of, I want to say 25 people. The pool here it would be turned into a swamp. Oh um, yeah, that was cool. And, they, and so they would, they would come down, they would get this whole area, they put um, dry ice in here. So it was all smoky and kind of eerie and creepy and and um, that they was neat. I forget. Hide people wherever they could. The first year we probably had between five and six hundred people, um, and it was nice and steady. It killed my grass. <laughs> um, but they walked. This is where the black tunnel was up here. And yeah, Trish built it up on a deck so air and light. The second get time, to the, she, the yeah. second year, she she said, "Oh, I'm going to build a deck this year." So, and it was really cool because it was like a collapsible rollout sort of a deck. It was really, it was really yeah. kind of neat because she could take it up so that my, my grass wouldn't die again. Um, but then, you know, so then the people went through this long visqueen tunnel and got scared. Oh, we had all kinds of noisemakers under there and stuff. That was hysterical. You know, one of my roles was to prepare a big meal, you know, and so we would all eat before and um, whatever it was that I felt like cooking that night. We'd all hold hands and we'd pray and, you know, for safety and, and that everyone would enjoy themselves. And, took them around and they did there was a lot of screaming going on <laughs> they came out of the thing right around here and when they came out of the tunnel remember dave was in that area at the end of the tunnel dave was at the end of the tunnel and we had that big plexiglass thing at the end of the tunnel but it was so dark in there you really couldn't see him but he sat in this little room and had all these controls he was loving it because he had like a control for one noisemaker that was at the beginning of the tunnel and then about the middle of the tunnel there was another noisemaker that happened and he got to hit that one and then when they got close to him, the exit was like they would they would go through here and he was in this little room and they would turn this way to go back out around the pool. And as they would turn, he would decide which person to get and he had this spark thing that would happen. It was like a chicken wire behind the plexiglass and so he would hit this thing and these sparks would be like right here behind the plexiglass. Oh. It was really cool. In the second year, we had over 1,100 people lines down the sidewalk a portalette in my driveway, um, you know, because everybody that wanted, was here was like, can I use your bathroom? And I'm not letting anybody in my house, so. Um, and then like all three news channels showed up, you know, and they were all 
you know, volleying for a position, you know, and it was the second year, it was just crazy. Um, the one that when the cops were out here and helping with traffic and stuff and they wanted to come through and they were like, you know, we want to see what's going on in here, you know, just to check it out. So I went through ahead of time. I was like, okay, we're taking the officers through. Don't scare them. Don't scare them. Don't scare them. Well, I don't think I was going to say, message. no, Dave got the message, <laughs> but Dave hears his own message. I think it was like, you know, oh, they no. said, don't scare the cops. I'm going to get them good. He was thinking of all the times where he wanted to scare a cop. Yeah. Yeah, so they got about halfway really, through the tunnel and he knew he wasn't to supposed to do it and he went ahead and went with a buzzer and got they the one female play. cop pretty good. And the guy cop, he kind of did this number for a second, but uh, he thought that was pretty funny. So that was pretty neat because when they go right past him, he'd go with this spark thing right next to him, you know. And then they went out and around the swamp like you were saying.